New Matter sent me this. It's the Mod T 3D printer. Two years ago, this was an Indiegogo campaign, and you could get an early bird for 149 bucks. Today, it retails for $399, and it's advertised as the first and only affordable, fully integrated, end-to-end -end consumer 3D printing experience. Well, we'll find out. I'm going to do an unboxing and review and give you my honest opinion on today's Filament Friday. So here it is. I took it out of the shipping box and it's in its own box and make great things from New Matter. It's a Mod T printer. It says on the top, easy to use, Wi-Fi enabled, hmm. quiet and safe, designed for the home. So let's open this up. It says, open here. So I'll cut along the dotted line. Ugh. Lift that flap. Oh, look at this. Nice sheet. And there's the printer. Let's see what the sheet says. Unbox your model. It says pull it out from the front. So we'll do that. This looks pretty pretty well packaged. You've got a handle here to slide it out. Okay, step two, take off the top foam. Step three, take off the cover with the foam inside. Step four, take these pieces off. Step five, take all these pieces off. Oh, there's stuff inside these guys. Step six, take the foam out of here. Got little finger holes to make them easy to lift. Step seven, take it out of the box. It looks like there's stuff underneath. Uh, step eight, oh, take this stuff out. Step eight was take this stuff out. Step nine, Box contents on the reverse side. There's a picture of all the contents that's supposed to be in these boxes that I took out. Just an acrylic box, but that's pretty nice. Let's see. A half a kilogram of filament. Ah, there's box A. Box A is supposed to be filament. What do they call it? They just call it pink. So, I'm a guy, it's pink. My wife would call it fusion or some other periwinkle something, I don't know. Oh, uh, let's see, spool holder in box B. Oh, uh, spool holder for the, probably in the back. There's something else in box B. Oh, it's a power supply. Box C is a print surface plate. That's the build surface plate, which is warped. I hope that's not an indication of things to come. Oh, you know, it's even warped in the picture. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Uh, build tray base is also in box C. That's this guy here. And this is what's really cool about this printer. It's got gears on here, and that's how it moves. So there's no belts or nothing. That's what I think is kind of cool about this printer. Instruction manual. So box D has a power cord, USB, power cord USB, a wire brush, looks like scrape handle and plastic blade, and then utility cutters. So a uh, pretty complete kit for, I think it's $3.99 retail. Um, and then go to newmatter.com slash setup to set up your Mod T. So apparently I gotta go online. And then there's an instruction manual, which, do I read the manual? Preparing your Mod T. All right, I'm going to read all this over. I'm going to go to the site, and then I'll continue on. So I went to the New Matter website. It said create an account. I did, and then it said click on here to download the software. So that was step three. Once I downloaded the software, I double-clicked on the icon. And then it said set up my Mod T and desktop software. There's a license agreement. And then you just click through this to connect the power supply, to connect the USB, and then it downloaded firmware. And this took several minutes and it updated the firmware on the machine. 
And then when that was done, I had to log into that account that I made, and then I connected the Wi-Fi. And here's where I had problems. It found my Wi-Fi, but it just couldn't connect. So it said to keep connected to the USB so I could use it, and that's what I did. So installation was successful, and then it jumped to this, to a setup page, where it took you step by step through setup. Each part was an individual video, so I decided to follow it exactly. So here I am. I've got my two plates, just like they showed. I lined up the two points that they wanted. Then you line up the little tabs and pull them together. And this connects the bed to the base. And then you put the bed in place just by setting on top of the gears. Just like she showed, I copied exactly. Put it to the corner, pushed it forward. And then the next step was to turn it around, install the spool holder, just like she showed. And then I had to disconnect the tube from the extruder. And now the next step, I became a little bit of a smart ass and copied her smile. And then I fed through the plastic all the way into the tube until it came out just like they showed. And from there, I was set up. Now back to the computer, it says click on load filament. Then it says please insert filament now under the status message. Then it shows this little video where you take the filament and just push it into the extruder. And that's what I did. And it starts pulling it in, including the tube. Now at the end I had to finish pushing the tube all the way in. And then you got to press the button to make it stop. Otherwise this thing just keeps extruding filament. So now I was ready to select my file. So I clicked on a little person, clicked on upload. And I went searching for my chest pawn. That's the print I test a lot of my printers with. So I found the chest pawn, brought it into the system, and here it is. And then it's going to load it into your library so you can put any kind of information you want. From there, it takes you to the print menu. You click on print, and now you can adjust things like the custom settings. This one's a 0.2 layer, 15% fill. This is the balanced. You have a high quality and a high speed and then balanced in between. And then once it sends to the printer, you just got to press the button, and this thing's ready to start printing. Well, actually, it starts calibrating the build plate first. I cut this shorter because this thing goes up and down and back and forth and side to side with the nozzle touching two and three times. It's a whole ordeal. And then finally, it's ready to print. Once the calibration is done, it starts printing, gives you a status message, the temperature reading, and you can monitor this if you want. But it just prints like any normal 3D printer. Here's a time lapse of it building the pawn. And that bed just wiggling back and forth. It's just, it's kind of noisy if you take the top off. But with the top on, it's pretty quiet. And so now I lift the top off and I can lift the bed right out, which is really kind of cool. And then you can slide the build plate off. So there's a lot of steps to get this thing out of here. But you can flex this plate and I could hear it like cracking. So it was the piece cracking away from the bed. So it was easy to remove. Now it didn't look bad at all. And this was the balanced print. This was a 0.2 layer height. So it looked decent. It had a little bit of a splatter effect to the sides of it. I think that's the way the fan was blowing, but it looked decent. But I decided to go back and print it at the high quality, which was a 0.1 layer height. And this to me was incredibly disappointing. It was not smooth at all. The flat part of the top of the pond was actually angled. I just didn't think this was high quality at all. So then I printed their suggested print, which was this little keychain thing, and I printed at the balance mode, which is 0.2 layer height. And frankly, this looked a little rough. It had layer lines, but actually gaps in the layer lines. So not real impressive. So the print quality that I got out of this thing is not what I would call top of the line. It's not bad, but it, I can get a lot better prints out of my other printers. There's no doubt about it. $399, it's a heck of a value for what you get, and this has got to be the easiest 3D printer I have ever set up and used. The instructions are straightforward, step-by-step, step, take you through it, putting it all together, coming out of the box beautifully. Uh, they've done a great job in that respect. Now, having said that, it's designed for someone just getting started with 3D printing or doesn't want to go too deep into it. If you're into all kinds of slicing settings, adjusting G-code, and playing with your printer, improving it, this isn't for you. And the slicing is all done in the cloud. You have to go to their website. You cannot use any other software. You can't load a G-code file into this, at least not that I could find. You load .stl and .obj files. 
There's a library files you can download and print, but basically that's it. You download it, slice it, and print it. And, and it gets sent to this guy either through USB or through Wi-Fi. There's no SD card, no other way. And where it's in my shop right now, I can't connect to Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi signal don't come this far. So I had to connect to USB. And one thing I found is once it starts printing, I could disconnect the USB cable and it keeps printing. So there's some kind of memory to it. Once I moved it closer to my computer in the shop where I can get Wi-Fi, I could give it to hook up to Wi-Fi beautifully. And then for my iPad, I could actually send it a file. Go to that website, send it a file. All I had to do was come in and press the button. That's what starts the print. So I still had to physically come to the thing and, and press the button, but that was it. It auto-leveled, it adjusted and calibrated itself, worked really well doing that. This is the first auto-level printer I have seen where I'm just like, yeah, it works. It just works. It doesn't have a cooling fan that's obvious. Underneath the extruder hot end, there is air blowing right here. So there's some kind of fan up in this unit blowing down on the, on the prints. Now this is PLA only. Even though it's got this nice box, it's PLA only, no heated bed. It is open source as far as using other PLAs, but you know the slicer and all that, you're not going to use Simplify 3D. The bed itself, I like that you can take it off and flex it. That is really a nice feature. So overall, I think this is a, a good value for $399. This is really a nice printer. And if someone's just getting started or it's in a school or a family just wanted to learn 3D printing, by all means, this is a great, affordable way to start. So if you want to see more videos like this or more project videos, check out some of my other videos by clicking on the links here. A dollar a month to my Patreon. Consider it a gift for all the videos I've given you all year long. Only a dollar a month is all I ask. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an episode. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Film of Friday.